in this problem if i put the limiting value in the given function we are getting in the numerator and in the denominator we are having so the limiting form of the given limit is 0 by 0 now we know that when the limiting form of any limit is 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity we apply L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule is differentiating numerator and denominator separately. So in this case we are getting after differentiating is it clear? Now if I put the limit we are having put the values so the final answer will become minus 3. Hence option C is correct. Have you understood it? Let us move for the next problem. In this problem again if we put the limit the limiting form is coming to which is 0 by 0. The limiting form is 0 by 0 hence again we can apply L'Hopital's rule so we are getting differentiating the numerator and denominator separately. Now if I put the limiting value again, again we are getting in the numerator and in the denominator which is again 0 by 0 form. So again applying the L'Hopital's rule that is differentiating numerator and denominator separately we get. Now if I put the limiting value we are having. Therefore, our value for this limit is half. Hence, again, option C is correct. Have you understood it? Let us move for the next problem. In this problem, again, if I put x equals to 0, in the numerator we are getting, which is again 0 by 0 form. 0 by 0 form means we are again applying L'Hopital's rule. So we are having, is it clear? Now even in this case, now if I put x equals to 0 over here, we are again getting 0 by 0 form. So here we can apply L'Hopital's rule as well as we can do by general method also. So here I am applying my general method. So what I am doing is I am simply separating the two limits. You can apply L'Hopital's rule also. In that case also you will get the same answer. Have you understood this separation? Okay. Now if I put x equals to 0. So we are getting the value of the limit as. Is it clear? Hence option A is correct. Okay. Let us move for the next problem. In this case A is a constant. So cos A and cot A both are constants. Now again if I put x equals to a in the numerator we are getting and in the denominator we are having. So again it is 0 by 0 form. Now when it is 0 by 0 form we are applying L'Hopital's rule. So we are having so our answer is sin cube a hence option c is correct. Okay let us move for the next problem. In this problem, let me just simplify it by writing cortex in the terms of cos x by sin x. Now after taking LCM we are getting, okay. Now what I am doing here is, you see if I put the limiting value, you will get 0 by 0 form. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Right? And we can get the answer. That's not the question. The question is, in this problem, since we have done sums previously, uh, three sums that I have done right now, all I have applied L'Hopital's rule. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is, I'm using the expansion method. Right? The expansion of sin x is given on the screen. The expansion of cos x is again given in the screen. Right? I am simply replacing that expansion in place of sin x and cos x we get. Now I am opening the brackets in the numerator. I 
I am taking x common in the denominator we are getting. Now, if you observe, we will find that the minimum power of x in the numerator is 1 and the minimum power of x in the denominator is 3. Now, we know that when limit x approaches to 0, for fx by gx, if the minimum power of fx is less than the minimum power of gx, then its value becomes infinity. Have you understood it? Now, in this case, what happened? Actually, power of fx is less than power of gx. Is it clear? Then the answer is infinity. Now, if power of fx is more than power of gx. So, in that case, for this limit, the answer will be equals to 0. Have you understood it? Power of fx is equals to the power of gx. If the power of fx, the minimum power of fx is equals to the minimum power of gx, then we always get some numerical value. Is it clear to all of you? So, in this case, if you observe, we will find that in the denominator, the minimum power of x is more than the minimum power of x in the numerator. Hence, its answer will be infinity. Is it clear? Hence, option D is correct in this case. Have you understood it? Let us move for the next problem. In this case, we have been given limit x tends to infinity. Now, first of all, what we are trying to do here is we are simply rationalizing it. So, we are getting is it clear? So, after simplification, the numerator is coming to so we can write it as Now, as x is approaching towards infinity, so my answer will be, we know that anything which comes out of a root sign is always with a mod sign. Now, in the question, they have said that a is greater than 0, so we can write it as, so answer will be half. Is it clear? Hence, option a is correct. Let us move for the next problem. In this problem, what we will do is, we will apply the formula for the sum of the cube of the first n natural numbers, which is nothing but, therefore, the given limit becomes, so we are having, is it clear to all of you? Now, as n approaches towards infinity, so we are having, so, the answer is 1 by 4. Hence, option A is correct. Is it clear to all of you? Let us move for the next problem. In this problem, before solving the sum, first of all, we will find out what is the sum of this series. If you observe, we will find that this series, one term is increasing and another term is decreasing. Is it clear? Now, to find out the sum of this kind of series, all we do is we find out some intermediate term of this series, which is, let us say, in this case, it's Tr. That is the rth term we are finding out. And the rth term will be nothing but R into, please check it and tell me whether it is correct or not. It is R into N minus R minus 1. So, so we are having now, let me take sigma on both sides where r starts from 1 to n. Now, we are applying the formula of, for the first one, for this one, we are applying the formula for the sum of the first n natural numbers, which is nothing but n into n plus 1 divided by 2. And for the second one, we are applying the sum for the square of the first n natural numbers. So, that is n into n plus 1 
into 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Now, let me simplify a little bit. So, we are having n into n plus 1. So, we are getting it as n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 divided by 6. Is it clear? So, I am writing the formula over here. The numerator is reduced to n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 divided by 6. Is it clear? Therefore, the given limit reduces to and in the denominator we are having the sum of the squares of the first n natural numbers which is again n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 divided by 6. So, we are left with dividing both numerator and denominator by n we are getting now, as n approaches to infinity, numerator is approaching to 1 and the denominator is approaching to 2. Therefore, the answer is half. Have you understood it? Hence, option B is correct. Let us move for the next problem. In this case, you observe, we have been given that A is greater than B is greater than 1. Therefore, we can say that B by A is less than 1, right? but definitely greater than 0. Now, the given limit is, I am dividing both numerator and denominator by a to the power n we are having. Is it clear? Now, you observe, if suppose limit n approaches to infinity, x to the power n is given to us. Now, this value becomes infinity if x is greater than 1. The value of this limit becomes 0. x is lying between 0 and 1. And this value will be equals to 1 if x is equals to 1. Remember this, right? So, in this case, you observe that b by a is basically lying between 0 and 1. Hence, as n approaches to infinity, b by a whole to the power n approaches to 0. Therefore, the limit becomes 1 only. Hence, option A is correct. Have you understood the problem clearly? Okay. 